Now, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with that very powerful and iconic image of 9-11 of five New York City rescue workers carrying the lifeless body of a man from the rubble of the World Trade Center. That man was Father Michael Judge. He was a Franciscan priest, and at the time, he was the New York City fire chaplain. And when he got the call that morning from the firehouse, Father Michael ran to the World Trade Center, and he rushed inside. He was there to help. And witnesses who were on the scene said that the help that Father Michael provided was, while everyone was panicking, Father Michael was praying. <laughs> and while he was praying inside the World Trade Center, a piece of rubble fell on him. And Father Michael became the first recorded casualty of 9-11. He's designated as victim 0001. And they made a documentary of his life. It's called The Saint of 9-11, and it's narrated by Sir Ian McKellen. Now, it is important for us to look at the lives of saints. I loved in our words of integration this morning, it said, if you want to be a great business person, Study the lives of great entrepreneurs. If you want to be an actor, study great actors. If you want to be a writer, study great writers. If we want to walk the spiritual path, it's important for us to look at the people who did so. So we are going to look at Father Michael, the saint of 9-11. Now, first of all, I want to say that when we hear the word saint, oftentimes we think of people who whose accomplishments were unattainable. Saints are often put on pedestals. We see them as so holy that we can never do what they did. But Father Michael was just like us. And I know that because I knew Father Michael. Father Michael often missed the mark. For example, Father Michael drank too much. He told the story of how he woke up one morning and had a shamrock tattooed on his behind. <laughs> and he had no idea how it got there. <laughs> but Father Michael from that day forward embraced the 12 steps. And for those of you who know the 12 steps and have incorporated them in your life, you know that that is a spiritual path. The 12 steps is Father Michael's spirituality. It said that there is a power in the universe that is greater than us, and we turn over our will to that power, to the God of our understanding. Father Michael especially resonated with the 11th step, which says, through prayer and meditation, we make conscious contact with God each and every day. Father Michael understood that part of the 12-step process was not only recognizing this power and aligning with it, but that we align with it through prayer and meditation throughout the day. Now, I have shared with all of you before that I wrote a book called Michael's Prayer, which is about a prayer that Michael taught me. I shared a couple of weeks ago that one of our church goers, Scott Vanderschwag, etched that prayer in a mirror, which is now hanging in our friendship hall. And all of you today in your bulletin received a postcard of that mirror with Michael's prayer. Michael's prayer is very simple. It's only four lines, but he would say it every day. And it was, Lord, today, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. 
I love it. I think it's the perfect prayer. Because it is the prayer of surrender. And it is the prayer of saying, not my will, but thy will be done today. When you incorporate this prayer into your life, something amazing happens. Your will and God's will becomes the same. That you will for yourself what God wills for you. It becomes one. And in doing the will of God doesn't make you miserable. It makes you free. In the epistle this week, I shared a picture of Father Michael and a quote that he said. And he said, following the will of God is not an obligation or a burden. Following the will of God is the joy of my life. You will experience a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of freedom when you live that prayer which says, God, surprise me. What do you have for me today? Because I know that whatever it is, it's for my greatest good. Because your plans for me are plans of fullness, not of harm. There's a wonderful children's book that was written about the life of Father Michael. And the name of the book is, He Said Yes. It's the name of the book. He Said Yes. Because Father Michael said yes to wherever God was calling him. And Father Michael said yes that morning of September 11th. And because he said yes, millions of people around the world now know Father Michael, and they know his prayer. People of all different walks of life. Many of you know that the stereotype of the New York City firefighter is that kind of rough and tough uh, macho guy, Italian and Irish, immigrant, blue collar. Father Michael is the saint of the New York City firefighters, even though many of them know that Father Michael was a gay man. Father Michael, during his time in New York, welcomed gay Catholics into his monastery for Mass at a time when the Archbishop of New York forbade gay Catholic groups from meeting in any Catholic churches in New York. Father Michael invited them into the place where he lived to say Mass for them. And when Father Michael saw that the Catholic Church was doing nothing to help people with AIDS, because at the time, it was very much like the time of Jesus, you were a sinner because you had that disease. Father Michael knew that that wasn't true. And Father Michael founded one of the first Catholic AIDS organizations in the country called St. Francis AIDS Ministry. Father Michael was a Franciscan. He followed the life of St. Francis whose words we so beautifully sang at the top of the service. Make me an instrument of peace. Where there's hatred, let me bring love. Where there's darkness, let me bring light. That's what Father Michael did. And I know Father Michael would be so delighted because the current New York City fire chaplain is a woman. And she's a lesbian. <laughs> She's a wife and a mother, and she is an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ. Today, on September 11th, when we remember that day of darkness, let us recommit ourselves to doing what Michael did, to praying the prayer of Michael, to praying the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, which says, God, today, make me an instrument of your peace in the world. Where there's hatred, <coughs> let me bring your love. Where there's injury, let me bring pardon. And where there's darkness, let me bring light. When we do that, 
we not only find peace within ourselves, we become instruments of peace in our world.